Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Today, a uh, quick Monday Minutes, guys. Going to just go over real quick uh, some de developmental things you uh, are going to see with pediatric patients at different uh, ages, what to kind of look out for, and maybe just a few ideas on how to sort of approach these patients at different ages. So, newborns. Uh, usually between birth to one month, um, depending upon where you are, you know, protocols, how they might consider it, but pretty standard. It's usually birth to one month of age. And some of the keys for interacting with newborns, you know, of course, they want to be held. They you know, they enjoy being held, that whole close sort of wrapped, you know, uh, um, blanket type of uh, of holding the swaddling. Um, you know, maybe they want something to suck on might calm them down. Um, and of course, you know, loud noises, bright lights are going to sort of startle newborns, right? And when you're looking at them, you know, as a as a provider and you're trying to see if there's something that's apparently or obviously wrong with a newborn, um, you want to look to see if you, you see anything that goes beyond their normal, what would be normal f for a newborn uh, baby, right? So normally they're going to be alert. They're going to be looking around. Um, they'll focus on a face. You know, the babies often will focus on faces. Uh, and of course, newborns, their extremities are, are, are flexed, right? So those are usually the normal characteristics. But of course, you know, you, doing your assessment, it's, an, it's a good idea to keep an eye out for these, what, what would be normal for them. And if anything looks abnormal, that should kind of trigger you to, uh, you know, look a little further. Okay, whether it's usually it's mental status, uh, their breathing, um, color, uh, things like that, right? So uh, that's what you want to keep an eye out for. You know, a, a newborn that looks lethargic, um, skin color is not that great. It could indicate that something else is going on, and you might have to look a little further, ask more questions, and uh, you know assess the patient you know uh, further to figure out what might be going on. But for normal characteristics, they're going to be normally alert, looking around, focusing on on faces, and they'll have that flexed extremities that you see in many many pictures. Okay, now. Infant, usually one month to 12 months old. And again, they're also, depending upon how far down the line, 12 months, you know, but normally they'd also like to be held, right? You know, what baby doesn't want to be held? Um, normally, your parent, the parents will be there. Uh, keep them nearby because the infant's going to be seeing them. It's a familiar face, or it's a familiar voice, uh, and that's going to help keep them calm and cooperative while you're trying to assess them. And one tip you might have heard before too when you talk about infants is normally instead of that head to toe exam that you would do with an adult, for infants and children a lot of time doing a toe to head exam um, is a little bit better. They're more cooperative and by the time you get to the head you sort of built that trust that touching their toes, their legs, their hands, their stomach um, isn't hurting them, right? It's not really causing them any problem. There's nothing to be afraid of. So by the time you get to the head, which is a more vulnerable area for an infant, um, they're going to be a little more trusting of you touching them, okay? So think about that, that, that toe-to-head sort of exam. Um, another thing you might think about doing is distracting uh, infants as well. Sometimes if they're very agitated, very excited, uh, sometimes, you know, some, some companies keep a, a small toy for infants to play with, even a pen light or maybe your stethoscope, um, things like that can sort of give them something to occupy them while you're assessing them, okay? And not every infant needs that entire head-to-toe exam, right? You, it depends upon what you're called for, what you're there for, um, as far as how you're going to be assessing them. Is it going to be more vectored exam? Is it going to be a head-to-toe exam? Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're interacting with them. Now, their normal characteristics, you can see, again, they're alert, looking around. Um, they're going to follow you. They're going to look at your face. They're going to follow, see what you're doing. Um, their extremities might be slightly flexed, depending upon how old, you know, in that line of 1 to 12 months they are. Um, they are able to straighten their arms and, and straighten their legs. And a lot of the, most of the time, they can sit anywhere between six to eight months, depending upon the developmental stages. Um, they'll be able to sit 
by themselves, sit up, you know, up, up by themselves. Okay, so just some normal things to kind of look out for. That you know, this is the type of stuff you're gonna to want to keep an eye out for when you are assessing infants. And again, these are the type of patients, you know, they're not able to really speak. Um, you're going to get a lot of crying, a lot of agitation. So I think, you know, you're going to be able to tell pretty quickly if something's going on with these patients, right? You know, a patient that would normally be crying or upset or, or frightened by the ambulances, the lights, the signs, all that stuff. You know, if they're lethargic, if they're, their color is not looking too good, you know, delayed capillary refill, they look like they're having problems with breathing, all things to sort of guide you along the path of other interventions and other things you might need to be checking on uh, when you're assessing them. Okay, so think about those keys to interaction and what their responses are going to be as far as what their normal characteristics might be for that age range. Now, toddler, one to three years. Now, this can be a little trickier because now, you know, these kids are getting a little more alert to what's going on. Normally, they're going to be alert and active. They might be walking. And they're not the type of age group that wants to sit still for anything, never mind an EMS person that's sitting there trying to do an assessment, right? You might go ahead and try to listen to their lungs with your stethoscope, maybe, uh, you know, check their pupils with the pen light. And what are they going to do? They're going to push you away. They're not going to want nothing to do with you. And that's pretty normal. So that's a good thing, right, if they're doing that. So some things you can think of when it comes to interacting with them to sort of do your assessment and, 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 and figure out what's going on with them to make sure that they are indeed okay and that, and that uh, there's nothing emergent going on. You know, try to make a game of an assessment. Sometimes you can sort of engage them a little bit uh, in, in the assessment process by making a game of it. Um, distracting again, maybe a toy, the pen light. Of, of course, again, this, this age group, the toe-to-head assessment is a great way to sort of build that um, trust as you're giving them an exam. Um, and try to let the parents help you in the exam too. You know, maybe you're doing one arm, let mom do the other arm, and then you sort of switch, right? So mom's checking the right, you do the left, then you switch, and mom does the right, and you do the left, or whichever way, right? <laughs> so try to keep the, co the, the kid covered, right? You don't want to have them all exposed and, 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 uh, and naked if you don't need to. Uh, respect their modesty. Um, you know, that age group, they can be a little, um, you know, embarrassed or a little uncomfortable or even more frightened if you start undressing them un unnecessarily, okay? So those are just some quick keys to interacting with a toddler. Uh, again, one to three years. And, that, and again, what you can do as far as distracting or the examination and things like that is going to depend upon if they're one or three years. There's a big difference there. And depending upon how, if how much closer they are to three years as opposed to one year, it's going to depend upon how much interaction you can get out of them and uh, how much uh, kind of headway you can make, especially if they're very agitated, excited, afraid, crying, you know, all that. But again, those are good things. Um, makes the sure makes let you know that they're alert, that they are active, and that they're not sitting still, right? So those are all good things. Now, last thing I want to go over here is sort of the preschool years. A little more difficult, guys, three to six years old. Um, again, normal characteristics for a patient this age. They're going to be normally alert. They'll be active. But they'll be able to follow some more commands, right? They'll be able to sit still if you ask them to. They'll co -op they can cooperate with the exam you're going to give them. They'll understand more what you're saying to them and what you're doing to them. Um, so this is the type of thing that it makes it a little bit easier in your assessment if you can keep them calm and cooperative and let them sort of understand what you're doing. And some of the keys to that is try to use uh, more simple explanations to what you're doing, right? Nothing too complicated, simple language to let them know step by step what you're gonna ha what's going to happen to them. All right, don't just go ahead and do it. Tell them exactly what's going to happen next. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check your legs, and I'm going to check your stomach. I'm going to check your, you know, even you can say, you know, I'm going to check your belly, right? Kids don't always know what their abdomen is, but they'll know what their belly is, right? So things like that. Let them know what's going to happen. If you have to do anything that is sort of invasive, you're going to start an, an intravenous line, or even put a non-rebreather mask on them, 
that can be pretty frightening to a kid, right? Especially in three to six years, not that old. That can be a frightening experience. Again, ambulances are there, lights and sirens. Who knows what else is going on? Mom and dad might be upset. So inform the child what you're doing. And if you're going to give them an IV or you're going to give them a nasal cannula or a non-rebreather, whatever the case may be, let the child know you're going to do it to them, okay? Let them know if it's, it might hurt. You're going to feel it's going to be a pinch. And you can even pinch their skin a little bit and say that's what the needle is going to feel like, okay? Sort of dispel the myth that the needle is going to, you know, be this gigantic thing that, that takes three people to bring into the ambulance and it's, you know, five feet long by three feet wide type thing that they have to be afraid of, right? Just pinch their arm a little bit. Give them an idea that that might be what it feels like when it's going to happen just before you go ahead and do it, um, and even non rebreather them at. Let them hold it to their face if they want, okay? Uh, whatever you have to do to sort of build that trust with them, let them know that what you're doing is not going to be hurting them, okay? And again, you can distract the child. Sometimes a toy would work still with this age group, um, but maybe you tell them a story as you're doing your assessment, okay? Um, that's another great way to get your assessment done, to get to distract them as you're doing it and you're performing the skills. And again, also, guys, respect the patient's modesty as well okay um so that's pretty much it guys for today's monday minutes um older age groups it's more about trust and let them know what's going on and making them understand what's happening um so keep that in mind for patients that are older than 60 years of age um still some special things you have to think about when you're taking care of these patients but you know what it's all about building trust respecting their modesty let it explain to them like any other patient, what's going on, but you might have to just do that explanation a little bit differently because they're younger and they don't understand those big words that we might use out in EMS. So I hope you can use these EMS office hours, Monday minutes, guys. If you have some minutes of your own, be sure to send them over to me. It's Jay Hoffman at EMS-Safety.com. Until next week, as always, Jim Hoffman, stay safe.